حضرتك معاك البوينتر تمام؟ هجربه وشوف تمام حضرتك ممكن تجربه؟ This is a pointer. Oh. The next uh, slide. Yeah. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Thank you very much, Dr. Hassan. And uh, those who are arranging this very nice electrosurgery meeting, I'm going to talk about the fascinating pine fibers. If we look here, we will know the current status in the literature, which is Mahai, which is the barrier, and which is the Sulu, thanks to the conflict in the literature. Mahai fibers may be present from the AV node to the right, left, or middle part of the ventricular center. In 1937, and this is very, very important, Ivan Mohain described microscopically fibers connecting the AV node to the right ventricle, not the ventricular fiber, in a post mortem specimen of a patient died of left bundle morphology tachycardia and not. I want to mention one point. Till today, 2019, we don't know what is the slope of you know why? Because no one did examine microscopically these patients with slow pathway. But we know what's chemical bundle because they examined microscopically tender bundle. So what Mahayim did, we should respect. Because it was a microscopical examination and he described no ventricular connections microscopically. This is Ivan Mahayim. This is Mahayim tachycardia. Left bundle morphology, axis between 0 and 30, and late precordial transition until V4 or V5, you don't have R to S more than 1. Very, very important, and this is the basics of my presentation, it's not pre-excited. Mahayim tachycardia is not pre-excited. According to the anatomy, no the ventricular connection. So the impulse by low should pass through the heavy node. Pre-excitation means delta wave. And the delta wave means muscle to muscle conduction. This is basic electrophysiology. Atrial muscle cells conducting to ventricular muscle cells resulting in delta wave. Anything which results in delta wave should pass through this pathway, not through the connection or the connecting system or the conduction system. So pre-excitation means delta, delta means muscle to muscle, muscle cell to muscle cell conduction, atrial cell to muscle cell conduction. In Mahayim we don't have this. Two connections can result in Mahayim fibers, nodal ventricular described by Mahayim and nodal fascicular which is the variant. Here is the nodal ventricular connection from that area near to the slow pathway to the right ventricle. During silent present, ECG shows normal PR and normal curves. These are the nodal fascicular fibers from an area near to the slow pathway again, but here to the right bundle. And in some description, very, very, very rarely to the left bundle, nodal fascicular on the left side. ECG again shows normal PR, normal QRS, because the impulse passes through the AV node first. No pre-excitation in mind. The whole part of the electrophysiologic diagnosis of Mahayim, whether original, described by Mark, by Ethan uh, Mahayim, or variant, node fascicular, is the electrophysiologic behavior during atrial pacing. During the atrial pacing, the following occurs. Gradual, I'm sorry. Gradual prolongation of the AH. This means that the impulse passes through the AV node and then through node of ventricular fibers. Gradual prolongation, shortening of HV, and this means a bypass tract. In, in normal situation, 
with no bypass tract like this, we have AH prolongation until we get wink back point, and we never have short HV. But here it is still, if we go back quickly, it is a bypass tract. This is a bypass tract, but not through atrioventricular muscles. It's a bypass tract, so the impulse passes here, giving long AH, and passes here simultaneously. At a time, this will result in shorter and shorter HV interval. And gradually, the QRS acquire left bundle morphology without pre-excitation, without pre-excitation. This is usually followed by Mahayim tachycardia, which has left bundle morphology similar to the atrial basin. This is an example of a patient with Mahayim fibers, this is during sinus rhythm, this is the intra cardiac tracing during sinus rhythm. This is atrial basin. If we look carefully, we started pacing here, morphology of the QRS is the same, with more pacing, morphology of the QRS changes, and when we stopped the Mahayim tachycardia, started in the last three weeks. Same morphology like the QRS complex during atrial pacing. This is Mahayim tachycardia. It's an antidromic tachycardia, but not pre-excited. Two approaches for RF ablation, targeting earliest V, during Mahayim tachycardia, or recording Mahayim potential during sinus rhythm very near to the area. This is the, in this patient, was the earliest at the RF ablation distant electrode, earliest ventricular uh, deflection we could get during the tachycardia, and we started ablation. This is very nice proof that you are ablating Mahayim fibers. We call it automaticity behind automaticity during RF ablation. This one. This is automaticity during RF ablation. Behind automaticity. This is a definitive proof that you are ablating behind fibers. For RF ablation, again, this is extremely important point. If you have can reach wake back point through the node. Now we don't have a bypass tract. Before RF ablation, you can never reach wake back point through the node as long as the Mahine fibers is active during the EBS. So if you pace, you find left bundle, which means that Mahine is active because sometimes it's not active during the EBS and you have to repeat this time. If it is active, you can never reach a wake back point because it passes through the AV node, I'm sorry, through the accessory pathway, and then behind tachycardia. You can never have this, never, ever, as long as you have mind fibers. Here, pacing V, pacing V, pacing V, pacing V, pacing V, pacing here is blocked. Uh, can we remove this or no? <laughs> because here, there is no QRS. This is blocked. Here. This is wink back point after our ablation. If we remove this sign, we will see that there is no QRS and this is not conducted. This is blocked. The difference between nodal ventricular and nodal fascicular fibers is during ventricular pacing. During ventricular pacing, QRS deflection in nodal ventricular fiber precedes his. We have VH, and this is the usual. But in nodal fascicular fibers, we the his deflection precedes the QRS. We have HV deflection. Pseudo Mahine fibers. This is pseudo Mahine tachycardia. I will leave it for 30 seconds. Pre-excited left bundle pre-excited left bundle morphology tachycardia. This is never ever true Mahayim or Mahayim variant. This is pre-excited left bundle, not true Mahayim. This is pseudo Mahayim. Two connections can result in pseudo Mahayim, atrial, I'm sorry, atrial fascicular connections, 
slowly conducting atrial ventricular connections. These two connections are really bypass tracts from the atrium to the ventricle, bypassing the AV nodes. So we have pre-excitation, we have delta wave, we have atrial muscle cell conduction to ventricular muscle cell conduction. This is the atrial fascicular fibers from the atrium to the right bundle. This is slowly conducting accessory pathway as usual, like any Kent accessory pathway, but slowly conducting from the atrium to the ventricle. Why pseudomyme? During atrial pacing, same behavior, and this makes conflicts in the literature. We have AH prolongation during atrial pacing, we have AH shortening, however, with pre-excited left bundle. Pre-excited left, again and again and again. Pre-excited left bundle. Here, we started pacing here, and this is AH prolongation, HV shortening. AH prolongation, HV shortening, and the pre-excited QRS complex. You can even get a went back point in these accessory pathways. So what is the difference? We get went back in an accessory pathway because it is slowly conducting, whether atriofascicular or slowly conducting atrioventricular. What's the difference between this wing back and the, the previous wing back? The only clue is the delta wave. If you have delta wave, this is wing back in a pre-excited QRS complex passing through slowly conducting accessory pathway atrioventricular or slowly conducting atrioventricular. They result in pre-excited morphology tachycardia. So, if we have left bundle branch morphology tachycardia, which is pre-excited, this is pseudomyme. We call it atriofascicular well, and might, we might during the EPS find an atrio, slowly conducting atrioventricular, but it's not. You should not call it uh -huh. Two approaches for ablation, whether you target the accessory pathway near the heavy ring, or you target the earliest ventricular deflection during tachycardia. Here, is the accessory pathway potential of an atriofascicular accessory pathway. And we target this potential. Of course, it's far from the his. It's different around, uh, around the lateral wall of the tricuspid valve. Here are the different sites for both. Lateral wall starting from this. I think this is seven block. Or 730, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, even 1 o'clock and even on the left side. These are the different sites for atriofascicular slowly conducting and slowly conducting atrioventricular accessory pathway around the tricuspid valve, lateral wall of the tricuspid valve starting from clock 7 or 730 till 1 o'clock and might be on the left side. The difference between both atriofascicular and slowly conducting atrioventricular is during atrial extra, during tachycardia, atrial extra stimulus can advance V without affecting A deflection. This occurs in atriofascicular but not in atrioventricular. Here, during tachycardia, we give one atrial extra stimulus here, and this advances this V, this V is shorter than this. The distance between this V and V is 310, but here is 265, but the next A is not affected. A comes in time. So when you give an atrial extra stimulus during tachycardia, which is antidromic, you can advance the V. You get the V earlier, but you, here the V comes earlier, but the next A is not affected. The distance from VA is fixed in spite of the fact that the V-deflection comes earlier. This occurs in atriofascicular accessory pathways and not slowly conducting atrioventricular pathways. These are the last, which is anatomically related connections, not behind, not there, and not pseudo, the so-called fasciculoventricular fibers. 
in fascicular ventricular fiber, you might have narrow complex tachycardia, wide complex tachycardia, with or without VA dissociation, whether these fibers are incriminated in these tachycardias or not, I don't know. Others might know, I don't know. Whether they are responsible for these tachycardias or not, we don't know. The very interesting, yeah. A very interesting finding, and you can never find except in these fibers, is pre-excited junctional beats. Junctional beats comes below the AV ring, so they arises from the AV node. To find pre-excitation in an impulse arising the AV node, this means that they should pass through an accessory pathway coming from beneath this avenue and that's why you might have pre-excited junctional beats. This is an example of a patient who is fasciculoventricular. It's less bundle, yes, but look here, axis is different. It is an inferior axis and not superior axis. In conclusion, diagnosis and are established on Mahain fibers or variant and pseudo Mahain fiber require very precise diagnosis before I attempt any attempt at RF ablation, knowing which connection you are dealing with is mandatory before RF ablation, otherwise it will be a, fa a big failure. Thank you very much. I hope that now we can differentiate between the, the four. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Shabazz, for this uh, presentation. Um, I'll say it again.